And I want to bring in now the producer behind Margaritaville, Norbert Putnam. He also produced six of Jimmy Buffett's albums. Norbert, thank you so much for coming on the show and sharing a little of him with us tonight. My pleasure. What is the memory that immediately comes to mind when it comes to Jimmy Buffett? Well, number one, he was a lot of fun. <laughs> it's a sad day for me to be remembering him as a guy who liked to have a lot of fun, but the, he was. Uh, when I got involved with Buffett, it all happened because a friend of mine, Don Gant, had produced Kamundi, a great record. But Jimmy had been out playing on the road and had a hot new band, and he wanted to record with his live band. And my friend Don Gant said, I, no, I can't deal with musicians who are not familiar with the studio. And his manager called me, and uh, he and I had a meeting, and he, I said, well, I'd like to see your band play before I, I, we discuss anything else. He said, well, the band's coming next week. And, and so I went out to see them the following week in Nashville, and they were great. It was more like the Rolling Stones than a Nashville country band. Mm. And I, I went backstage, and I said, well, call me tomorrow, and let's talk about songs, okay? And the next day we got together and all the songs were about sailing, drinking, carousing <laughs> in the Caribbean. And, uh, and, and as a producer, you know, pr producers are always looking for a new way to present an artist. Uh, we're always hopeful that uh, we'll come up with some brilliant idea. And Jimmy and I met in my favorite bar, as a matter of fact, that night. And he said, so what are you thinking? And I said, <laughs> I said, uh, I said, this may sound crazy, but what if we use steel drums from Trinidad and marimbas and ship's bells clanging? He goes, that's the South Seas. That's Michener's writing. <laughs> I said, well, maybe I'll think of something better. He said, well, I'll call you. I didn't think I'd ever see him again. And I think about 10 days later, he rings me up. He says, Norbert, that idea you had might actually work. He said, uh, I started writing the first song. Well, does that mean we're working together? I said, well, what, what's the title? Oh, he said, I'm, it's going to be called Changes in Attitudes, Changes in Latitudes. We're leaving Nashville and going to the ocean. <laughs> That's how I got the gig. <laughs> I mean, can you take us behind the scenes of Margaritaville? And I, I so appreciate you talking about coming up with this iconic sound, right? That really differentiated both of you, put you, set you apart. Um, Margaritaville specifically, was it a labor of love? Was it a spark of creation? Did you know it was going to be a hit when you were sitting in the booth and you heard it? Oh, yes, yes. Now, now first of all, uh, we had picked out 10 or 12 songs, and this title was not in there. And uh, Jimmy and I, we have breakfast every morning. Matter of fact, we had a very tight schedule. We worked from 11 o'clock to 5 every day because he'd moved his sailboat over, his first sailboat, to Coconut Grove. And we'd take our rental car down there with our cassette tapes and motor out and listen to the day's work. And he had said to me, I have one other song I'm trying to finish. And I said, well, what's the name of it? And he said, Margaritaville. I hated the title. <laughs> well, I'll tell you why. At, at, at this point in history, Ville was getting attached to everything. The Motown studio in Detroit was Hitsville. Mm. Um, my friend Henry Mancini had written a beautiful ballad called Dreamsville, and now we're Margaritaville. So mm. I'm thinking it's, it's a real slow ballad or something. Aren't you glad you didn't talk him out of it? Oh, I didn't dare. I didn't even tell him I didn't like it. I was, I, you know, producers are very careful about what we say. Artists are sensitive. <laughs> producers are too, okay. <laughs> but about a week later, uh, unannounced, he came over to the studio at 11. He had a legal pad. It had a lot of scratched out lyrics on it. And he put it up on a, on a music stand and he sat down, grabbed a guitar, and started playing Margaritaville. And... As it went along, I, I, I couldn't believe it. It was one of the best songs ever written. Mm. <laughs> I guess a lot of people decided that later on. But by the time it was over, I, I think we all applauded the guy. And he said, in the other, Jimmy, that's great. <laughs> <laughs> and, and we started to record. And uh, this was the one song his band had not rehearsed. And after doing two or three takes, I asked him if he could use this uh, percussionist I brought in from Nashville. 
Kenny Buttry. Buttry was also one of the greatest drummers in the world. Mr. Buttry sat down on the drum kit and we got it in the second take. And uh, the rest of it was easy. Mm. Now, now the, the, the sounds that we added that took it more to, down to the islands, I had a lot of help with that from a guy named Mike Utley, who still plays for him today. Mm. Michael created all those keyboard parts. And Michael and I wrote all the strings and the woodwinds and stuff that we had to use real musicians on. I didn't mean to say real musicians, orchestral musicians. I hear you. I, and it sounds like it was a joy to put together. And, you know, I, I know that he was um, so generous with his, with his fans, but he was also very private. And, you know, even when he canceled uh, that concert in May, um, mm -hmm. he didn't really disclose exactly what he was going through. Were you aware of his battle with skin cancer or the toll that it was taking on him behind the scenes? Well, one of the one of the members of the band had mentioned to my wife that uh, he was having some problems, but didn't but never indicated it was anything that was serious, you know. And yeah. uh, as a matter of fact, uh, uh, I had a call from another member of his band a few days ago to say that um, Mac McAnally was flying up to say goodbye to him. Mm. And, and and still, uh, and we were all thinking, well, the guy was just out playing a few months ago, right? And, uh, so it was fast. And then, it was it was fast in the end. Absolutely. And the next day he's gone. Yeah. And it's it's uh, uh, he was such a fun guy. It's hard for me to talk about uh, our times together in this moment of of such sadness. You I know. know. I know. Norbert, can I ask you if it's not too hard? Do you remember the the last time you spoke with him? Do you remember what he said? No, but he was down here for a wedding when Mac McAnally's daughter got married, and. Uh, I had a sinus infection and couldn't go over that day. Mm. Cheryl came back. Cheryl's my wife. She said, I want you to know Jimmy came up and said, your husband <laughs> was so important to my career and give him a hug for me. Oh. And so I'm sorry I missed him now. I thought I had more time. I, I think we always think we have more time. And I think that's something I, I'm walking away with uh, from our talk tonight. But um, Norbert Putnam, it's such a pleasure to meet you and to meet one of the people behind um, a song that was an important part of my childhood. My mom used to sing me, oh, I'm gonna get emotional, used to sing me that song when I was little. Uh, Norbert, thank you so much uh, for stopping by the show. I appreciate it. It's All the best pleasure. to you. Thank you for asking me. Thank you for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of NewsNation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.